Yo, what's up guys? So the training started a little bit late, but we're on now. So welcome to the training. We'll give it a second for everyone to jump on. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, if you enjoy the content here, be sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video. If you're watching this on Facebook uh, during the actual live session, um, do us a huge favor, help us expand the reach. Uh, by simply giving this post a heart and then putting hashtag live or hashtag replay. It'll help expand the reach through Facebook's Facebook group algorithm. Uh, bam. All right. So we're going to make this real simple. We're going to no, no fluff here. We're going to go straight into this training on how to start a digital marketing agency from scratch and the fundamentals you need to know in order to understand your process and then how to go each step in the process, how to go about each step in the process. Um, if you guys, uh, are wanting to learn more when this video is over, be sure to go into the, um, if you're watching this on Facebook, go into the description at the end of this video. There will be a um, an option for you to book a time with my team to talk more in detail um, and, and schedule a vision call to see how else we can help you. Um, if you're doing this on YouTube, uh, we will put that, we'll put it in the description down below. Um, so just click see more under the video and you'll be able to book a vision call with my team just as an FYI, if it seems like we have the tools to be able to help you depending on where you're at, uh, which we don't work with everybody because not everybody is in the right position to do that, we are going to offer you some type of paid product at the end of that. So just a heads up, full full transparency if you book a vision call with us. Um, all right, so let's uh, dive into the training here. Um, now we have some people jumping on the live. Uh, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna do this two ways. I'm going to do it through a uh, visual representation on a whiteboard, and then I'm going to do this through a PowerPoint slide deck. So this way you guys can see everything in detail as we go through it. Uh, if that's cool with everybody, drop a one in the comments and we're going to get started here after I see some ones. I'm going to go over to the Facebook group too. Um, this way I can help monitor comments while I'm on here uh, since there's nobody in the room with me right now to monitor the comments. Um, so let me come over here. Boom. This will help me see all the comments coming through. Uh, hashtag live, you're on right now, guys. Help us expand the reach. We'll get started. Um, I'm willing to help you guys if you're willing to help me. Cool. Um, let me come over here. And we're going to start sharing screen. Awesome, awesome. All right, so everyone's starting to hop on. I love it. Uh, we got about a dozen people on now. Um, so what I'm going to do is, how can I share my, I'm going to share my screen real quick so we can hop into this. Um, boom. Okay. In case you guys forget my name, I'm going to go ahead and put that share screen there. All right. So let's go over to step number one. All right. So as you can see here, guys, this is completely blank. Um, as you can notice here, it's because I'm literally going to fill this out with you. So this can be a learning process and everybody can see. Whoa, I hate that slide. Uh, so this way everybody can see exactly how to do this. Cool. Um, okay. So step number one. I want to be clear about something. I'm going to put niche and I'm not going to dive into this much. I'm going to tell you why. Uh, by the way, if you guys have a question, you know what? Let me move this over so I can uh, so I can actually see the questions. Cool. Um, but yeah, anyway, so I'm going to dive very briefly into this only because um, I didn't niche when I first started very well. And I'm gonna tell you why as we go through this entire process here, uh, it wasn't really necessary at the beginning. So, and I'll explain why. Let me pull up the Facebook group real quick. So I'm gonna see the comments while I'm doing this. Uh, there we go. Yeah, so niching is important. I just wanna be very clear on that, but in the terms of like what I did when I first started, cause remember what I'm gonna show you is what I needed to know when I started this whole journey. Drop a uh, 77 in the comments, guys, if you can see this well while I minimize the screen still. I wanna make sure that you guys could still get a really good view of this. Okay, there we go. All right, so we got a few dozen people approaching, roughly 30 people or so. All right, so let's get started. I have said that a few times, but uh, like the video if you're on, guys, we have a few dozen people. Um, Guys, this whole video is going to be how you start your agency from scratch. Jordan, I'll cover questions at the end, though. If you guys have questions, I will answer them at the end. Uh, so, because I want to get through this super fast, because um, it's going to be uploaded onto YouTube. So, I want to make sure everyone watching this on YouTube can get the information they're looking for pretty quick. So, I didn't niche very well. 
Um, that's okay though, because I'm going to show you what you need in order to still be successful. So, uh, I didn't niche. I will say I did go after, I went after really anyone that fit the criteria that I'm going to explain to you today. So the next thing that we dealt with was a lead. Okay. And, or excuse me, a traffic source. What the, there we go. And when I did this guys, I had no money when I started out. So I don't know if you guys are, um, if you guys are in the same boat, but I had no money when I started this. Uh, can you guys do me a huge favor? Can you drop a, a 100 in the chat? If you guys can hear me, I, I'm pretty sure you can, but I don't want to keep doing this. If you guys can't hear me, that would be awkward. Um, so yeah, just go ahead and drop a 100 in the chat. If you can hear me. So, uh, in the terms of traffic sources, I had no money guys when I first started. So if you can relate to that, um, just go ahead and drop a comment, uh, if you can. But when I first started, I had no money and I'll let you know that I rebuilt my agency three different times. Um, if you guys know my backstory on that then you understand why I had to do it three times. The first time I was going to get sued by the yellow pages. So I had to drop my clients because some came over. Uh, and then I rebuilt my agency with just e-commerce because before I didn't niche, remember? And then I actually niched to e-commerce. And then I started again to show we had a process that works. Uh, so I rebuilt it with a brand new niche uh, into real estate and we scaled it to 13 and a half thousand a month in recurring revenue in 30 days. Uh, so the process works really well. I'm going to show you the real simple overview of how to be able to do it. So traffic sources where I went to be able to find the leads I wanted to pursue that I cold called. Um, and I'll tell you why I cold call because everyone's like, we'll use LinkedIn. Cold calling is dead. I use cold email. I go out and do working event, networking events. Like guys, I don't care what you do. I'm telling you what I did to get here and you can use this information however you like. Um, because I'm not one of those guys that like sells courses on something I didn't do. Like if you go to my YouTube channel or if you're on my YouTube channel now, you know, I only speak from experience. So, um, anyway, so the traffic sources that I would pull my best leads off of that made it really easy for me to get, um, from the prospecting to the close, uh, and everything in between where obviously you sell a deal, close the deal, blah, 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 uh, were these. So I use Google, I use LinkedIn and I'm explaining how I use each one of these here in a second. I use Instagram and I use the yellow pages. Okay. So, and I only went after, um, big ads and these are called uh, half page or full page, big ads, half page or full page. And the reason why is because they're spending, if they're doing a half page ad guys are spending at least $500 and if they're doing a, uh, double truck is what they call it is the quote unquote yellow page term, but that's where they have an ad on both sides of the pages. Uh, that's called a double truck ad, which is two full page ads, um, or you could do one full page ad, or you could do a half page ad. But if they're doing double truck ads, they're spending a few thousand dollars a month on that, and it doesn't do any like it's just stuck there, right? Um, so you know, if they're spending a few thousand dollars on something they can't optimize at showing them leads, you know that's going to be a really, really good person to talk to. Uh, so anyway, that's why I did yellow pages. Instagram. Um, when I used in, when I used Instagram, let me put this in black because maybe it'll be easier to see uh, I'll do green oh that's no, still hard to see um, so let me move this up here actually um, and the reason why is I'm gonna do I'm gonna do this as a bullet point um, so with Instagram it was a little different because um, I actually don't prefer Instagram over the other ones I'm going to go over today, but I'll let you know how I used it. So with Instagram, um, why can't I make this a, uh, wow. Okay. So with Instagram, okay, this is just going to be all effed up, whatever. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? Sorry guys. My OCD is kicking in here. I, I don't actually have OCD. Um, don't know why I said that. So we're going to come over here and boom, that just looks weird or whatever. So with Instagram, you can search niche and look under locations tab and it'll pull up every like dentist in your area. Okay. So you can use Instagram for that. Um, I like to do this because sometimes I would just walk into the location 
So if you want to just walk into location, you can do that. If you notice, I don't have networking events on here, guys, because it just wasn't my thing. Uh, that works for you, then awesome. I'm just letting you know how I did it. LinkedIn, um, I would do the same thing. I would actually pull up because I didn't have any money. So, you know, I couldn't do LinkedIn Sales Navigator or anything like that. So I would use DuckSuit at the time, um, which I don't we don't use this anymore. We use Lead Connect. But with Duck Soup, I would uh, filter by niche. So uh, I'll get into what, what, like what types of businesses I work with. Um, Google, uh, people spending money. And also, yeah, Brandon, this is being recorded. It'll be on YouTube and it's live in the Facebook group, guys. So it's free forever. Uh, people spending money on ads, which are obviously the top three, bottom three spots um, or top four, bottom four spots. Now, uh, I would also go to the map. I would actually type in the search bar because remember, I started working with Ecom, right? Um, this was a little trick for some reason. No one talks about I type in the search bar. Uh, Shopify stores near me. And this is going, why is this so weird? Um, so this would pull up any retail shop near me that was, uh, that had a Shopify store as well. And this, that, so keep in mind guys, just because they have a store doesn't mean they spend money. Just because they have a Shopify store doesn't mean they spend money. My YouTube channel guys is just Rob Quinn, just my name. Um, so it, it doesn't mean they spend money, but it does mean that they know how to run a retail shop and they know that they can make money online. They just don't know how. So I would go to this and I would find out if they had a pixel yet. If they didn't have a pixel, then that, that would tell me that they are not edu really educated in the online, make money online space. So I would, that would made it super easy for me to say, hey, I can do this for you if you wanna be able to increase your revenue uh, at really no additional cost because it wouldn't cost them anything to spend money as long as they were making money. Then I would say, let me show you how to do this. Like, let me do this for you. They'd be like, oh, okay. And then I would explain different stuff with Shopify and they'd be like, okay, cool. And then we would crush. So anyway, that's how I found e-commerce uh, stores. And it was so easy to sell because of that pitch. Uh, so people spending money on ads, obviously very easy to sell because they're spending money. It's a lot easier to get someone to move money than to create new budget. So traffic sources. Um, and what I'm going to do is pull up this whiteboard, guys, uh, and just make a quick. Um, so we're going to put traffic source. Uh, traffic source. And then we're going to keep this going. So let's go back over here. Um, all right, next slide. So then over here, guys, now we're going to be dealing with. And if you guys are already finding this valuable, then go ahead and let me know in the comments, like drop a 33 in the comments. Let me know you're finding this valuable. Again, this is just the overview of exactly how I did it without any fluff. Uh, all right. So let's go into the actual lead. I want to show you guys what I looked for um, in leads. So I wanted to make sure that they were spending money. Okay. I wanted to make sure that, um, or they were ranking or I wanted to make sure that their service was high ticket. Um, and it needs to be a combination of these things. So let me go ahead and dive into the details of what I mean by all this. You know, what? I actually don't like this format. So I'm going to move this over to the left. Cool. All right. So let's dive into these three things real quick. You know, what? I'm going to make all of these black. Actually, I changed my mind. So if they're spending money, here's how I would find out. I would either use a tool called SpyFu or I would use a cool tool called SEMrush. Now, I think these tools are now paid tools, but when I first started, SpyFu was free and SEMrush had a, a longer trial, I think. Um, actually, I was so broke when I first started. I had to uh, I had to actually like, keep signing up on free trials. Like it was, it was a tough time, guys. Uh, but I kept signing up on free trials with different emails. Um, so is that, that's kind of hard to see. So, um, 
Anyway, so I'd use these two tools and it would help me know uh, as a guesstimate if they were spending money. SpyFu was less accurate than SEM Rush, but also cost less. So just depends how accurate you want to get. Um, so I would use SEM Rush to see how much money they were spending. And if they were ranking, then you could also use SEM Rush to see what their SEO spend would have been. Um, and if you could rank them at all or any better. If you don't know anything about ads, it's okay because it just gives you talking points. Um, so I would see if they're ranking on Google because uh, if they're ranking higher on Google, that means that they are doing some level of SEO. Uh, so that means that they are investing in some way into their business. That also showed me they were then, whoops, they were then spending money. Uh, if their service was high ticket, what do I mean by this? I mean that with one sale, they could cover their ad spend. Oh, they could cover their retainer with you or even better their total spend with you because if you're like me i would just charge them one flat rate <clears throat> that's how we did our agency we always charge one flat rate and so for example if they spend three thousand dollars a month with you then a thousand of that is going to ad spend two thousand is a retainer right if they're spending five thousand a month with you on a three month contract, a thousand goes to ads, 4,000 goes to a retainer. I'm not gonna get to the details of that right now while we did it that way, but that's how we did it. Um, so this right here, that's how you know if it's gonna be also a good client to work with. Because if they're spending a thousand dollars and a lead is costing you $10, right? That means that they're gonna get a hundred leads and if they're closing at you know 10%, that means they're gonna close 10 of those 100 leads, right? Or more specifically of those hundred leads they're booking, let's say 25% of them, which means that they're gonna get 25 leads. And if they close at 10%, that means they're closing roughly two, two clients, right? Of those, of that thousand dollar spend. And if let's say as a roofer and their average roof costs them, it's $10,000, they profit $5,000. That means they just made um, on an estimate between a profit of 10,000 to $15,000 on a $3,000 spend with you, $3,000 total spend. Now in the meeting, you should already know what it's gonna cost them to just, or what it's gonna take for them to justify a $3,000 spend with you. If they tell you they need to see at least a 400% return, which is ridiculously astronomical. That means that they would have needed to see a $12,000 uh, uh, $12, $12, $12 worth of revenue come from their spend with you. So as you reverse engineer all these numbers, now guys, it's getting a little bit more higher level, I get it, um, but this is a really specific training. So. Um, so, uh, so basically you'll know that you've exceeded what their expectations were. Does that make sense? Cause now you brought in $15,000 and they only expected 12 to justify your spend. That's how you're going to keep that client forever. And then you could also start selling them more. Okay. So that's how, you know, basically the servicing of the high ticket. Um, all right, let's go to the next slide. How was that guys? Did you guys dig that? Um, did you guys dig that? So, all right, so now we're coming over here and now we have the lead, okay? Boom. So now you're going from uh, the traffic source. Now you have your lead. Let's dive into the next one, okay? Yeah, guys, if you can understand how to reverse and engineer KPIs, you're gonna be a you're just gonna have a crush fest when you hop on calls. I mean, business owners love that you know your shit. Um, <clears throat> you know your numbers. So, all right, let's get into the next one, uh, cold call. Now, a lot of people are gonna say, Rob, cold calling's dead. Rob, I use LinkedIn, I generate so many leads. Rob, I use cold email. Uh, Rob, I don't wanna do cold calls. Like, here's the thing, guys, it doesn't matter because I'm explaining to you how I did it. Like, this is how I did it. This isn't a guessing game for me because I've already done it this way multiple times. And I know it works. So if you don't like it, that's fine. But this is a proven system. Um, and I didn't have any money. I was broke. So what's the best way to make money if you don't have any money? It's by simply using something that doesn't cost you anything, which was picking up the phone and dialing. And I'm really fucking good at it. So uh, anyway, that's how I did it. So let's dive into what I my goal was for the cold call. So I just wanted to either A, get the decision maker on the phone and skip to the discovery call phase 
and book the appointment. I'll get into the discovery call phase in a sec, guys. Or B, I was looking for the decision maker's name. Okay, so this, this way I could put a follow up in my CRM, which at the time I used Salesforce, and then I migrated to Pipedrive. Okay, um, so I could call back and ask for the decision maker's name directly, because you're always going to have better results that way. Um, so this is how I did this guys. Okay. Is that pretty easy to see? Let me move this up. All right. So that's how I went about this with the cold call. Those were my only two things with the cold calls. I was looking to do. If I called, I got to the gatekeeper. They didn't want to move me on. All I wanted to get was a decision maker's name because now I could follow up and actually ask for a specific person. It's going to be a lot easier to get the appointment that way. Uh, boop. Let's come over to the whiteboard. We have the lead and then we have the cold call. Boom. Okay, we're going to come over here on to the next thing. All right. Drop any comments, guys, if you have questions. And obviously, like the post. I just like my own post. Um, all right. Come over here. So then after we get to the cold call, we are now at the discovery call because we have the decision maker on the phone. So let's say you call back, you give the decision maker on the phone or you book a time to talk to the decision maker. Well, that's not the appointment. You're on the discovery call now. And this is going to be more consultative. A lot of people ask me, Rob, do I use a pitch deck right away? Rob, do I do a consultative meeting? Rob, do I, what questions do I ask? Like, do I show them something? Do I need case studies? Do I need results? None of that matters. Um, I'm going to explain why. So in a consultative call, all you're trying to do is ask questions to be one step ahead of your prospect or potential client. So when I say that, what I mean is you need to let them exhaust what they know and say one additional thing. In order to be the expert, you don't need to be the person that knows everything. You need to be the person that knows one thing more than your potential client because that makes you the expert. You know more than them, so they are going to perceive you as the expert. The only way you can do that effectively is by letting them exhaust their knowledge base. So you want to ask questions that get them to do that. All right, this is also going, this is really high level psychology, which we won't get into today. Um, but it will give you a ton of ammunition and power in the conversation to be able to um, navigate in that way. So your discovery call is going to be next. Okay. At the discovery call, you're going to determine if this is a good client to work with. So after you do that, we get to our next step, which is going to be here because at this point you've scheduled the call. Okay. So at the discovery call, assuming that they're the right fit for you, Okay, because even if you're broke, you need to qualify them. Uh, that's a hard thing to do to be able to sell like you don't need it, especially if you're broke, been there, done that. Uh, but you need to make sure that you only book them if it works for you. Okay, so I'll explain what this is here in a sec. I'm going to go to the whiteboard and we're going to put discovery call. Okay, and then from there on to the next thing. All right. So at the discovery call, they say, oh, yeah, I like this. This makes a lot of sense. You seem to really know your shit, Rob. I'd be like, yeah, thanks. I know. I really like you, too. You sound really nice over the phone or whatever. So uh, your business looks great. So from there, you're going to book a call with them. On that call, you're going to before the actual. So let me just go ahead and put the next slide so you can see what the in-between step is going to be. This is going to be the appointment. OK, so here's where a lot of people slip up. From the time that they're on the phone with the decision maker, they don't do this consultative step. Okay, they're trying to skip to the actual appointment. Right now, you just need to see if they're a good fit for you. And you don't have any money to use ads like we did. Like the, we scaled real fast by using ads. Okay, guys, just straight up transparency. We were running ads to a video sales letter that had a long form application, so they're already qualified to work with us, and it was really easy to one call close. But when I didn't have any money, I had to do it this way. All right. That's why I'm explaining it to you this way in case because I know I talk to a lot of people in this group who don't have any money and that's fine. It's not a dig on y'all uh, or anyone watching this on YouTube. It's strictly the facts because I was in your position January 2018. I had no money or the first time I built my agency in October 2017. I had no money. OK, I still built it to five figures a month in 90 days or less. The first time 90 days, the second time 60 days. So it's just it's easy to do. You just have to trust me. 
and you have to believe in the process. Trust the process and it will be good to you. So the discovery call is where I come in and um, I would make sure they're qualified. In between being on that appointment that I book on the discovery call, I send them a video sales letter and an email and in the calendar invite, okay? A video sales letter is also known as a, a VSL is also known as a video sales letter. AKA a mini webinar. And the reason I would do this is because this is going to, uh, actually, let me just write this down so it creates a visual. Uh, what I would do is this is going to give them the overview on how your um, the catalyst to get them my VSL was niche specific. Yeah. Rob Quinn starting out, we won't be landing someone who is spending 200,000 a month on SEO. What is a good telltale using SpyFu that they're a good fit? Just spending a few thousand dollars a month. Great question, Chris. Uh, overview on how you're the catalyst to get them uh, out of their pain and to their destination safely. Because I say safely because a lot of people don't want to spend money because they're afraid of getting burned. So your video sales letter will give them that information that you can do that. Boom. Um, everybody following this right now? Everyone getting a, everyone just loving this right now? Let me know if you're just loving this right now. Uh, I'm going to move. Actually, I keep this right here. Okay. So on the next thing. So the appointment. So as we get into the appointment, Here's what everyone needs to understand. The appointment is where you can use visual selling. Now, if you guys watch me on YouTube, I 100% consultative sale, pretty much sell my way right into the close. I'm just really, really good at asking questions and being able to figure out people's pain points and to really not have to know anything or say anything and get the sale. But not everybody is, okay? That, it's taken me a decade to learn that. All right. It's taken me a decade to, to learn sales in the way that I, I have learned it. Cause I've learned from a lot of people that are masters in sales that will never, you'll never hear about because they don't use the internet. They're very traditional. They stay in the corporate environment. They're okay with making like 20 grand a month for the rest of their life, which is more than enough money to live the lifestyle you want. So it's fine. Um, but the thing is guys, not, not everybody can do that right away. Okay. So it's really important to follow this process if you want to figure out how to do this if you don't have a lot of experience in social media marketing. All right. So with the appointment, you're going to use visual selling. And this is where I bring in a pitch deck. <clears throat> and the pitch deck will be niche specific. We use a specific pitch deck now. Um, it's fucking amazing. Um, we might, it, it is available in our programs, uh, Agency in a Box and The Art of Sales. Um, that we have. And if you guys want to learn more about those, like I said, at the end of this call, you can either, if you're on YouTube, go in the description to book a vision call, talk to my team. Or if you're on Facebook, you can look in the description above and book a call, talk to my team. Um, but the pitch deck is amazing. Cause remember at this point, they've already seen the VSL. So they already know how you get them from A to B safely from their pain to their destination safely. So on the appointment, they're only looking to see if you're going to say something that they don't want to hear that turns them off and they don't want to hear it. Okay. So, cause if you say that they're going to want to jump off. So this approach in the pitch deck, the pitch deck itself is very helpful, but it's like psychology and how we actually use the pitch deck, right? All the transitions that actually make it so powerful. All right. Cause here's the, here's the deal guys. I could give you the best pitch deck the best webinar. Okay. Uh, I can give you all these things. Uh, I could give you the best scripts, but the problem is if you don't understand the psychology of how to use it or why you're using it, then it's like me giving you a Ferrari and you don't know how to drive stick shift. Okay. So basically you have this amazing vehicle sitting in the driveway and you're not going anywhere. All right. That doesn't do anybody any good. So you need to make sure that you understand the psychology behind using this stuff. Uh, all right, so let me come over here. So now we have, whoops. Okay, 
So um, anyway, so we have the appointment. So we're gonna put appointments right here. Um, whoops, I forgot VSL, my bad. I hope you guys are following. I'm making this little whiteboard sheet just so we can like easily reference each step. I need to get one of those one those handheld ones. See Alex Becker using Dan De Silva. Those things are freaking boss. Uh, so we go from the VSL to the appointments. Okay. All right. On to the next thing here. So after the appointments. All right. I'm going to come over here. And your next step is you're going in for the close. All right. Now, this is actually a part of the appointment. Uh, here's the thing. If you guys are on the appointment, you should already have all the decision makers. You should have already had all the decision makers because on the discovery call, okay, you're already gathering and gathering interests and uh, gathering the information you need to make sure they're qualified. So before you've booked the appointment, which you'll do here on the discovery call, you're making sure that you have all the decision makers on the call. All the decision makers have watched your, your video sales letter. So by the time you're on the appointment, they already know what you do. You already have all the decision makers. So now, um, now you have the chance to go in and close. It, you've been given permission, basically, uh, indirectly given permission. Uh, Jamila, yes, we there's actually going to be an option to get the pitch deck um, once we hit 7,000 members in our Facebook group, which we are going to do this week. So that will be that will be something that will be available this week or next week. Uh, so very exciting. Anyway, uh, so <clears throat> with the close, this is going to be where you guys are going to so important. So important. Collect on the phone. If you have all the decision makers on the phone, there is no, I need to ask for the decision makers uh, permission. I need to get the credit card. Unless you're closing a Fortune 500 company, because I remember doing that. I was like 24 years old at the Yellow Pages. I never experienced this before, so it was a great learning experience, but I did close it. It was 18 grand a month uh, on a six month contract. <clears throat> so it was like a $108,000 deal, but they had to get the credit card from the company. Like they could sign off on everything but it was a 60 day billing cycle, which guys I strongly suggest, unless you have a big agency, uh, not to do that because that means you don't get paid for 60 days. And uh, the yellow pages took the hit on it because it wasn't my company at the time uh, that I was selling for. So yeah, it was, um, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> so anyway, you'll collect on the phone. Don't wait for them to go get the contract and all that other stuff unless you're closing like big fortune 500 companies and stuff like that, you should be able to close it on the phone if they're only doing a few, a few million a year uh, or less. So close it on the phone, collect the payment <clears throat> on the phone. Uh, yeah, you guys can watch this back. This will be on YouTube or it'll be live in the Facebook group for all eternity. Uh, so we're gonna go from the close and then we're gonna come over here to the referral, okay? And this is AKA the second close explain why uh, first we're gonna come over here to the whiteboard of truth and justice close and then referral okay all right so the referral guys <clears throat> is the second close and uh, you always want to ask for this right after you close the deal a lot of people like to say well don't I need to show results no the best time to ask for a sale is when you made a sale. The best time to make a sale is when the emotion's high. And the emotion is, emotion is really high after you close them. Because remember, if they close, they're gonna 100% be excited, right? Um, they're gonna be excited about it. So. You want to make sure that you go in and ask for referrals and there's a way to do this okay a lot of people will say so do you have anyone else that uh you would want to refer to me that is like 100 percent the way not to do it okay you know what i'll even give you my my referral script here all right you guys could just use this i still use this today I use this. actually i still use this with anything i do it doesn't just have to be in uh sales um anytime i, I want something additional and I, I need to be specific this is how i ask it Do you, why is this all caps? I'm yelling at everyone. Do you 
have any friends in business that would benefit from a similar service. So there's something in the corporate world that we used to say a lot um, called being strategically vague um, and, and being elusively specific. So basically to break that down, um, do you have any friends in business, which is a very general, strategically vague, that would benefit from a similar service? Similar being, again, strategically vague. Um, but you're still being specific because you see uh, they need to be in business and you, they, they want a similar service to what you're offering. So it doesn't have to be exactly what you did for them. They don't need to be uh, in your line of work. They just need to be in work and they need to have something relative to what we're doing for them to be able to help them out. Okay. So this is my line I use to generate the referral. And what will typically happen, guys, when you do this is that they are going to typically be quiet for a second and not want to give it to you. And what you want to do to interrupt that train of thought, kind of like I just snapped right there to bring you guys back. But what you want to do to interrupt that train of thought is you want to make sure that you stop them in the middle of it. Okay. Because if not, they're going to continue to run with whatever they're currently thinking, which is they haven't done work for me yet. Why would I want to refer my friends to somebody that I don't even know can actually execute yet? But it's okay because that doesn't matter. So when you ask this question, do you have any friends in business that would benefit from a similar service? They're going to be quiet for a quick second. And then after about two seconds, what you're going to say is, yes, that one. Okay, so let me do this again. Wait two seconds and say, yes, that one. And they're going to be like, what? You're going to be like, that one you're thinking of right now. Yeah, I want to work with them. And then you put your pen to your paper, you look down and you say, how do you spell their name? Okay, what's the best number to reach them at? Is it okay if I mention you? And you're gonna say all these things one after the other without their response, because you wanna end with, is it okay if I mention you or are they gonna run for the hills? That's always the line I said. And they would laugh a little bit. Whoops, I don't know why that pulls up. They would laugh a little bit and um, they're, that's gonna drop their guard it's going to lower the barrier of entry for you to be able to get that name and referral. So that's how you go from there. <clears throat> and lastly, you're going to come down here and you're going to outsource. And the reason you do this guys is because if you're anything like me, I was clueless. Okay. And to be honest, still kind of am. Uh, I understand Facebook ads enough to make money on it. You know, I could generate anywhere from a three to eight X return, which is what I do for myself, but I don't know the ins and outs. So let me give you an example, <clears throat> just cause if you guys are wondering like, well, I could also generate a eight, 10 X return for my clients. I don't want them, anyone else to run my ads. Um, so I hopped off a call with, um, the guy that runs Jose Pena's ads. If you guys don't know him, really big Instagram influencer, super smart businessman. Um, but and the guy that runs Jose's ads, I hopped off a call with cause he's going to start running my ads and I wanted to hear how he approached things. So, um, whenever I talked to him, what he brought up to me and the way he explained how to know whenever you need to change a graphic versus changing your ad copy versus changing your targeting, I was like, holy shit balls. I have never looked at each KPI in that way before I've looked at all those KPIs but I've never viewed them in that way. So what this told me was, <clears throat> I don't know shit about Facebook ads like I thought I did. And I definitely don't know YouTube ads. I definitely don't know Google AdWords. I definitely don't know SEO or any of that stuff. So instead of me trying to figure it out, why would I do something I'm not good at when I could do what I'm good at? It helps you scale faster, right? So if you wanna be a true businessman, businesswoman, okay, and you wanna scale quickly, what you need to learn to embrace is your weaknesses and what you're not good at and lean into your gifts. If you can learn to do that and embrace that, you will scale quickly. And not only that, but you will gravitate the people into your world that have the uh, strengths to complement your weaknesses. And all of a sudden, before you know it, you create this machine. Okay. Now we're still getting there. Um, just full transparency. You know, we're, we're sitting around 50 to 60 grand a month right now and we're still creating this quote unquote machine. Uh, I believe I, my personal opinion, I believe a machine should be doing a few hundred grand a year. Um, 
this, this way you're able to remove yourself. But uh, if you could learn to be able to do that, what will happen is you will continue to grow because the people that want to be a part of your vision and mission will gravitate to you. And then it comes down to who, how do you bring on the right people? It's not a matter of how do I find them, but how do I bring them on? Okay, to make sure you best qualify them. So guys, let's get into this. Um, just so you know, the referral, now we have outsource. <clears throat> so guys, here's how we do this. Uh, what's gonna happen is you're gonna start right here. You're gonna figure out your traffic source. You're gonna figure out how to properly <clears throat> look at leads. Um, then you're gonna come over here and you're going to cold call them uh, because we're all, I mean, I was broke as shit. Um, you're going to do a discovery call to qualify them, send them a VSL to make sure they stay qualified before they hop in the appointment. On the appointment, you're not, you're going to listen yourself into the sale, not talk yourself out of the sale. And this is where you have the opportunity to close them because you have all the decision makers on the call, get referrals, and then you're going to outsource the work. So guys, that is, it's really that simple. I hope everyone enjoyed this. Uh, I told you this to be very quick. It's less than an hour, uh, straight down to the meat and the bones. If you guys like that. Um, again, go ahead and give us a heart on the video because we've had roughly, you know, 30 people on the whole time or so, which is, I appreciate it. I know everyone is at work or doing their own thing. So, um, so guys, if you liked it, also drop a comment and let me know. And, uh, I'm really looking forward to, uh, doing more of these. Um, we have a special guest interview tomorrow in the Facebook group on Tuesday. Uh, actually he helped out Russell Brunson with some of his mini webinars and um, he's worked with some other guys to help them scale up to a few hundred grand a month, um, such as you know Bob Mangit and Adam Winnig and uh, a few other people. Um, so anyway, his name's Joel Irway. He'll be on in the Facebook group uh, June 25th, which is a Tuesday tomorrow, uh, depending on when you're watching this. So if you guys wanna do that, tune into that tomorrow. It'll be around noon. Actually, it will be at noon, so that'll be exciting. Uh, and then we have, yeah, a bunch of other cool stuff coming to the Facebook group. So anyway, guys, I'm going to hop off. Got a bunch of other calls to jump on. Hopefully that was helpful and I will holler at you guys. Oh, you know what? I should probably answer some of these questions, I guess. Um, yeah, let me just, I, okay. I'll go ahead and answer some of these questions. If you guys have any other questions? Let me know. I'll answer them real quick. I think somebody had one. Okay. Actually, no, I'm running super late. Uh, I'll catch you guys later. Subscribe to the channel. If you like it, if you want to book a vision call with my team to look into more specifics, um, instead of just the overview, if you thought this was helpful, man, if you thought this was helpful, we will dive into some crazy details about your business. And if we have the right tools for you, uh, we will full transparency. Um, we will offer you a product that will cost money, uh, in order to invest in. And I'll tell you right now, it is absolutely phenomenal. The tools we have in our paid programs. If you thought this was good, you will, to be honest, probably poop yourself. Is that good? Uh, a little graphic, but I mean, it's true. So, all right, guys, I'll holler at you later. Hope that was helpful and adios.